Hey, everyone. For all of you guys that are watching, thank you. Uh, whether you're a student, a someone in school, someone trying to learn how to paint, someone that just enjoys painting, period, or whether you're a heck of a lot better than me, uh, thanks for showing up. Um, I don't like to think that there's better and worse. I just like to think there's different looks. So uh, we looked outside, it's raining here up in Santa Rosa where we live. And uh, I didn't have a rain painting, but I thought I'd do a snow painting instead. So this is from the west shore of Lake Tahoe. And it's, uh, it's really late snow. You could call it early snow because it's November if you want to right now, but it's really, it's really late snow. So uh, I've made a few marks in here as you might be able to see, just to give me a, an approximation of where I'm gonna put things. Um, this big bank in here sits a little above the midpoint. So it sits kind of up in, in this range and tip of it's about here and then it comes back. So I kind of have some of these areas marked out a little bit. Um, and I will do some editing because I think there are some areas. So I have uh, three really, or almost four, but I'm gonna say three major areas that I'm dealing with. One is the trees, the foliage. And that has a completely different look. The other is the cleanliness of the undulating snow. So there's undulating, in other words, it's not just white. There's some tones that work into it. Then we have this beautiful waterway, which gives us our design, which there are subtle reflections. You can see through it a little bit up here, a little bit of sky coming through. So those are kind of our elements we're gonna deal with. And as I always do, I like to start with the sky because it's the first element that's the furthest back. So I'm gonna take my blues, the same palette I almost always use. Um, and well, it is, it's radiant white, uh, cad yellow hue, a little bit of a Naples yellow light, um, cad orange hue light. Uh, what is that? It's the one I use all the time for the name of it. It is, uh, um, what do you call it? A uh, yellow ochre. <laughs> Why the hell I couldn't remember it, I don't know. Uh-oh, that's yeah. scary. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that does get scary. It is yellow ochre. Uh, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, Radiant Blue, uh, uh, Sap Green, Asphaltum, and a little bit of raw sienna. And then I have some warm uh, warm white that I, I'm probably going to use for the lights of the snow. I could mix one up, but I'm lazy, uh, as, as I've stated many times. So let's just kind of keep it. So here's we're getting kind of a nice blue sky and probably a little too dark right there, I think. I'm working on a Again, I picked a large canvas. Uh, I don't know why. I think I did it more as a challenge for myself than I did it for you guys. Just, um, just to kind of see what I can do with a large one. I, that's what I attempted last week, and it worked OK. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm trying now. So we're just kind of blocking in where I see the sky. And you notice I'm rubbing it in. I'm using this, this little. Uh, what do you call it? A gesso brush. Kind of go in there. There, kind of, and then there's some sky holes off to the left, and they're going to be somewhere in that vicinity. Okay, we'll just kind of put them in there and forget about them for right now. Um, so, how do you like it so far? Mm -hmm. huh? Okay, let's uh, let's move down to the trees now. What? I want to mask these trees in, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spot in what I see at the shadows. So I don't want them to go as dark as I can possibly go. So I started with asphaltum and a little bit of the sap green, and I mixed a little white into it. And just because I don't want them to go as dark as they can go. Um, because I want to be able to, to accent the darks later on. So they're kind of in a a neutral warm and they're kind of in that range. Whoop. I still have a lot of that blue, so I've got to work that out into the, I just worked it right into the rest of the paint. And I often do that rather than pick up a new brush and start from scratch. Um, I like mixing, intermixing what I already have going. I don't know if it's color harmony or if it's a bad habit, but it's what I do, so. 
we kind of have it. I'm still getting a lot of residue out of the brush. Okay, let's start with this. It's a little bit on the um, warm side. So I added a little bit more green and I added some radiant blue to lighten it up. I like that better. Um, so we're gonna start right in this realm, right in here. And we're gonna use the brush to create the feeling of the tree so I don't have to do it later. As a tree, that tree is almost completely in shadow. Uh, the next tree is a little bit in shadow on this side. So we'll kind of put it in there. And at the base, I want to get, I keep mixing some of that lighter blue in. So I have to keep darkening it a little bit. Uh, and we'll just take it from there, run it over, run it up the trunk of this tree. Let's bring this up. Now it's, and it feels okay. I'm second guessing myself. There, that's the trunk of the tree. And it goes straight on up. And then we'll get that foliage in there, add a little bit more green and a little bit more radiant blue to it. So it more, it greens up a little bit, but it's still in the same color range and value range. So we're gonna put some of that tree in it. Um, it's interesting, uh, the thought I had, I was watching a, a terrific video uh, this morning um, on, on one of my favorite musicians, singers, Diana Krall, and I was watching uh, her play and I started thinking of the similarity to brush usage and the way you play a piano. So when you first learn how to play a piano, you, pr you don't think about how hard, you just press and hit the note. Um, and I think as you get better, I don't play piano, by the way, just so you know, I just uh, wish I did, but I don't. Uh, but as you move along, you start to become more adept and you realize that sometimes you just smash that key. Sometimes you lightly touch it. Sometimes you hold it longer. Sometimes you release it immediately and go to another one. And I immediately started thinking about using a paintbrush. And I thought, my God, there, there's so much similarity in that in that what we do is the same kind of thing. We push sometimes harder. Sometimes we hold the brush down longer. We release, we use a, a, a bold stroke. We use a really lightly sensitive stroke. And so I, I really started thinking about that kind of similarity, which is, um, I find interesting. You guys might not, but I do. Another tree back here. I don't want to spend too long on this because I can really over worry it. And I want to lay, I want to be able to lay it in so we can move into all parts of the painting equally. And I don't have to just uh, concentrate on one. So we've got another tree trunk probably about here. Just, you know, the same word I use over and over again. It's kind of a placeholder. It's where I think it belongs, but at the same time, I may adjust. I uh, uh, go back to that. Paint like you know what you're doing and assume you're wrong. That's how I approach painting. Period. Knowing that I could easily be off quite a bit. Now I'm mixing that into that into that blue. Oh, I, you know I really see a lot of ochre in those greens. By the way, uh, the lighter greens. So we're gonna get this stronger dark. It's going to be darker, I can tell right now, up in here. And there's a tree trunk. Let's get that other tree trunk. It's going to be darker, but it comes forward. And I'm moving it a little to the left because it was a little closer. There's one going off the page. I don't want it. I, I'm going to edit that out, this little blip here. OK. You can hear the rain. Wow. You can hear it? Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, that's right, I can. I can. Oh, yeah, it's raining good here, you guys. I don't know where all of you are, but we're welcoming the rain. It's not terribly cold, so uh, that went a little warm, by the way. I just started putting it in. So I actually threw some more um, green into it. I could even throw green or blue, either one. Now, you see how every time I mix, every time I hit that sky color, I'm picking up some of that color. I don't mind that because the trees are not a uniform color. 
Um, so I don't mind it. And I really, boy, I see lots of ochre. Now we're gonna put that other strong tree. This is the tree trunk right in here. And then there's a tree trunk about here. And then a lot of this tree. That's why you see me push, pull. I use the whole brush. I use the tip sometimes. Much the same as I was, I was talking about uh, with piano playing. Down here. I don't want to spend too long. We'll get this careful with the tree right here. Yeah. We have a new tripod today on our uh, camera phone. So hopefully I won't bump it and mess you guys up. Usually by the time I get into total painting, I'm oblivious to anything else around me. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I know it's true. So it's, it helps me sometimes to talk to you just because it's, you know, if I wasn't talking to you, I'd be really kind of odd because I'd be sitting here talking to myself. And that could lead to all kinds of other problems. So Lori Moore said it's sun, sun shining, but it's 39 degrees. Oh, where's that? Where yeah. Where is, where are you, Lori? Here's Southern California. And Samila said it's waiting for snow in Pennsylvania any day now. And I missed a few others. Before. Well, then this is a perfect painting for you. <laughs> a little snow. Get a little snow early. So it's fun to paint anyway. Um, it's fun to paint on location. Although one of the things that I found, uh, I've done a few times, is you paint. It's real sticky on your palette. So you have to add a lot more medium. Oh gosh. Lynn said there's an earthquake in Nevada. Jeez. How big? Who said that? Lynn Bain. Oh, Laurie's in Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, Illinois. That's where my parents went to high school. <laughs> and that's actually where my parents met. And I've never been there. 78 in Alabama. Just yeah, um, I was talking to someone yesterday and they were saying in Massachusetts, it was like 77. Wow. Really weird. Welcome to climate change, gang. <laughs> we're so happy for the rain though right now. It's yeah. After the fire season, just. Absolutely. So I'm gonna leave this kind of at kind of this point right now because. I kind of know kind of where I want the lights. I know I want some tree trunks in here. I have to, uh, I, I've mentioned this before, but when you paint over wet paint, you've got to paint with paint that is even more wet. Otherwise it'll go right, right into it. So any of these tree trunks, I added more medium. And if I wanted to, I'd just go one, two, see, picking it up, picking it up. Let's do this one. And every time I, I touch it, I'm picking up more paint, just because I know I'm contaminating the paint that's on my brush. Okay, let's leave that alone. Let's keep moving. What do you say? 86 in Hawaii. Okay, rub it in, guys. <laughs> Who's in Hawaii? Ginger? Mm -hmm. 86 in Hawaii. We are making <laughs> all the Midwesterners kind of ant. Okay, so we got a couple things laid in. Let's map in the river. Normally I would put the snow in, but I'm gonna map the river in first. And it's dark and it's warm. Um, so I took, mixed into that same green color I was using, a little asphalt and a little bit of, of uh, raw sienna. And what medium do you use? I'm using a little bit of the sunflower oil right now. And turf. It's a little warmer than I want, but not too bad. So. It's a little warmer. What do you do? Throw a little blue into it. What do you say? Let's try this. And let's not waste time. Let's just get it in there. If it's wrong, I'll, I'll hopefully fix it. But I need it in there. Throw a little bit more green into it just a second ago. 
So we're mapping this this river, and it's it's not a river. I, I, it's a it's a little inlet from a creek on the, uh, like I said, on the west shore of um, Lake Tahoe. So I, I refer to it as a river, but it's not. Darker here. Might as well. The best thing to do is just don't waste time with it. Get it in there. And then as you, we lay the snow in, we'll correct anything that doesn't feel right. So a little darker, I actually threw a little bit more ultramarine into it um, at this point. Maybe a little bit more. And as I do, I'm adding a little bit of the, come right there. That's almost a little too dark, but. You can hear, you can hear how hard I'm rubbing. So, snow bank here. Smooshing it in there, so. What? Just smooshing it in there, so. Yep. I just need it to get on, and I don't want it on thick. A little bit more ultramarine, a little bit more turp to it. And the turp will just help, help it go in faster, but it'll keep it really thin. It'll probably set up pretty quick. One of the nice things about if you use turp in the beginning or lean, as they like to call it, um, turp it'll meaning, yeah. turp meaning damsel. Uh, if you get that in the beginning, as you move along, um, it'll hopefully set up enough where you can almost paint over it within within an hour. Even though we're not going to really have that luxury, but. It's thin, you can, I can see through it. Um, sometimes if you like thin to thick and you like to be able to see that, it's a really nice, you, know, you just have to kind of think about the kind of understrokes you're, you're making, the kind of underpainting, the character that you're putting into it. So we have kind of the movement of the darks, all right? Again, placeholder, all right? Let's start, start in the back. I see a little bit of warm there where the land is coming through. I do want to get that in. So I'm gonna take some white, clean some of the stuff, I'm going to take some raw sienna because it looks like it's almost raw sienna all by itself. And I'm just going to kind of see what happens when I, all right, this is here, it's got to be lower. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to wipe off a little of this because I'm just going to mix it and it'll help me a little bit if I just rub it. You see that? Just take a little bit of that paint off. The reason being speed. Oh, I kind of like that stroke. It's kind of dry. Kind of has a little tooth to it. So I'll get a little bit more in here. Here. Sneaks up in here. It's a little darker, so add a little bit of that dirtier brown to it. Bring it right back. Not dirt, dirty enough, huh? Let's try this. That's a little better. It's a little, a little red, a little too red. Cool it down. I'm using green to cool it. Bring it up about in here and leave it. Okay, that feels okay to me. Uh, I can see where I need to bring some of the trees down a little further here, right down in here. And I'm just using whatever color I have in my brush. All right down in there. Okay, there's going to be some that comes down in here. So this this is going to take a little bit more time as we move back in here, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, I want to get a little bit more of the trees down. Not just using a color that I have off to the side. So I'm not really, I'm just keeping it dark, slightly cool and, and relatively neutral. Okay. Let's go in and get a base snow color in there. Okay. Knowing that I'm going to come over with lights. Probably, and a few of the shadows. So I'm probably looking at the color that would be more of what we would call the undulations. Um, so I use white ultramarine and whatever else I have in this brush. But again, white ultramarine and whatever I have in this brush. And I'm probably gonna need more white today, but that's, that feels okay. I'm, I'm, pushing the paint around so I get a little bit more brown out of my brush. So it goes that way. Okay. 
I don't want to over second guess that. I like that mix. Got a really nice little, I don't know if I'm going to keep that, but I sure like it the way it looks now. It's when paint hits paint sometimes, it'll do wonderful things. I don't know if you can stay left at all. Huh? Okay, keep it going. I got enough juice in it, meaning enough medium where it keeps it. Come bring it up here. Now this is all gonna be in shadow. So I don't wanna kind of get into that too much because then I'm just gonna have to worry about painting over it too much. So let's just kind of paint this where it comes out. And the snow behind back on this bank, that's gonna be really white. So I don't see a lot of undulation going on there. Up in here, I see a little bit. So we'll just, Get some interesting edges there. Here's, you've got a lot of shadow on that. Not as much on this. Add a little more white to that color, just so you know, and a little medium. I'm going to be coming over this with some stronger whites. So what, warmer, was warmer whites. Again? Just, what was that? What was the mixture again? Curious. The mixture was ultramarine white, and then a, I had some dirty umbers in my brush, and I just used those rather than mixed up a whole new co color and added. I don't need to because I stayed with the same brush. It's the same brush I painted everything with so far. Where that? That picked Oops. up. That that's, that's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes these mistakes end up being little God sentence. They're little colors you wouldn't think of, and all of a sudden they come through and they work. Mm. A little bit of ultramarine on the tip of that brush. Didn't mean to, but doesn't bother me either. Nothing's, nothing's that finished yet. <laughs> so when some of that stuff happens, we'll let it happen. And I'm constantly adding more white, a more ultramarine, and then pulling the brown that I residue that I have it in the brush. Added a little warm white to that color. It went a little lighter down in here. And up, just gonna brush snow up in there. So we've got them kind of laid in there, kind of most of those banks laid in. Don't have the light laid in back in here. I'll lay these back in. Those are gonna be whiter because uh, of the shadows. So I think what I'm gonna do right now is lay, start to lay some of those shadows in. And for that, I just added ultramarine and ultramarine all by itself goes way too blue. Let me, and let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm adding ultramarine and then I'm making a little bit on the violet side, went a little too far with it, by adding a um, little bit of alizarin. And that way you keep it not radically blue, but the sky is influencing it. So it's got, to, this, this shadow is darker than that sky. So this shadow has got to be darker than the sky, right? Just so we keep our value relationships kind of working. So the uh, first thing I did, go ahead. Radiant blue is uh, gambling, right? Ga radiant blue is gambling. Now I'm just gonna hit some of these shadows back in here because I'm gonna paint the trees over them. I like the value relationship. I think the value relationship is working. Up in here, these shadows look as dark as the trees, but they're not. They're absolutely the color, the same kind of color. They might be a little deeper, version of that color, but they are that color. So I, I'm gonna pull in some of the shadows back here. And there's some back in here. But the main shadows, and I, the shadows aren't cl one clean color. So 
That looks pretty good. I think a little bit more red on it might help. Okay, that's that's a, feels a little better. So what I want to do is I want to find out where that shadow goes. It goes down underneath this tree. So it's going to work its way kind of from right where the sky is down in here. So I do have to paint over wet paint. So every time I do that, I'm picking up that paint. So keep that in mind. So sometimes you have to go a little darker than you think because you're going to pick up the paint that's there. And where does that come? It comes down somewhere in here. Okay, and then we get some of it dappled of the tree. But remember, this is going to be a lighter version of snow than that is right now. It's not going to stay that color. Okay, so we're going to go up here, over. This is all, see, I mixed some of the other color into it. So I went back and remixed those two colors darker. And we'll come up to this tree up here. Work our way out. Dapples a lot in there, meaning there's light. So I'm probably going to paint over too much of it and then bring the lights back in later. And And there's some cool shadows back there. Just looking to see any little thing I might see that feels like a shadow I'm going to put in now. The reason being, it's, then if I don't put it in now, then I'm going to have to paint it around the trees. Now I deepened it a little bit. See that color? I darkened it. As it goes to the tree, it gets a little darker. Down in here, edges of, of the sun. This little bank in here. Shadow on it. And the shadow comes over here. Picked up a little brown. Didn't want to, but it's what happened. And then we get the nice, big, strong diagonal shadows coming up down this bank. And it's on that bank. And every time I, I'm picking up more paint because I, I knew I painted into brown. So right now you're just painting it in basic shapes. Of the, the, the big basic shapes that I see, the breakup of shapes, the breakup of values, breakup of colors. So you're dealing with all of that at the same time. And try to come as close as you can to where you want to end up. But knowing that you, you may be off, that's all there is to it, you just may be off. Now, let's get this big shadows down on this. The shadows are probably going to get a little bolder, a little darker, a little more colorful as they come forward. So I just mixed up a little bit of a darker version. Not much. Just a little bit. Everybody, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Maxfield Parish, but he painted some beautiful snow scenes with these gorgeous blue. Well, he magnified colors intensely, but these beautiful blue, blue shadows, blue violet. Much more refined, much more of a refined kind of a painting than something like this. This is much more of an impressionist um, kind of an approach. <laughs> what size canvas is that again? This is 24 by 30. So it's a pretty good sized canvas. Um, and you know, sometimes it almost doesn't matter how big it is. And it, as as uh, I've said, and it's been said to me, the difference in doing a big painting and a small painting is the size of the brush you use. Meaning that you use much larger brushes for a large painting, at least in the beginning. So we kind of have the feeling of it is starting to work. Let's let's leave it at that. Is it working great? No, it's not. At this point, it's working fine. And that's all you're hoping for. Fine. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that sky color right here. Probably putting it in too soon. But I do see it influencing the water right about here. Not a lot. Uh, Kevin has a really good um request. Uh, can you speak a little to when you use artistic license or when you make decisions to depart from reference to improve your paintings? 
most of that, uh, yeah, uh, most of that concept of artistic license happens in the realm of uh, editing, moving elements around, enhancing value and enhancing color. And when you do that is for, for my, I can speak really truly just for myself. When I do that has everything to do with how the painting is shaping up. Um, I, I, may, I may begin a painting with a specific idea. Of, I like that, but maybe I want it more muted. I think it's more intense than I want it. So sometimes I will start with that in mind, but most of the time, a, a lot of that happens as you're painting. And as you're painting, you're going, well, made that too bright, need to tone that down. And um, as far as composition go, the artistic license comes from everything from, from cropping, the way you crop it, it comes, in play where you, uh, what you leave out, what you put in. For example, I love that little branch, but it lines right up with that tree. So I'm gonna move that branch to the right. All right, that's what you would call, and if I were in location, I'd be doing the same thing. It has nothing to do with doing a studio painting. It has everything to do with um, artistic license as you, as you like to put it. So, you know, uh, Tech, as far as technique goes, I don't look at that as being part of artistic license. I look at that as being part of um, intent and concept. In other words, when I when I first start the painting, what is my intent? Is my intent to be really uh, super refined? Or is my intent to let these big chunky strokes take over and become uh, what the painting is really, you know, um, made up of? So a lot of that is just things that happen as I'm painting. So I do a lot of reaction as I paint. Uh, some artists work with, a, with an absolute 100% plan. Um, I kind of do, but as the paintings are going, I'm, I'm constantly reacting. I'm looking at things and saying, boy, I like the way that's happening. I'm gonna do more of that. Um, by the way, I just did the bank in there, just so you know. So now, Oh, that's terrible. Uh, that's the reflection and the upper part's the bank. So if I need to, which I think I do, I need to add a little bit more reflection. So I'll get that in there. Get that in there. Okay, so now we have a little bit more reflection. Uh, and again, I'm just putting them in and leaving it, all right? So there is a reflection of the snow in the water. I just, when I was in that, area, I noticed it, and I'm going to make it similar to the shadow color, but not as dark. So it's going to be, because it's, I don't want it as dark. I could, I could probably do it the color of the snow, because the snow is going to end up being lighter, but it's right here. Okay, that's that bank of snow that's reflecting down. There is a, a big blob right in here and it's reflecting right in here. So I'm gonna kind of pop that in now, probably a little too early. And then there's some reflection from the bank back in here down and I'll put it in and smear it around and I went too far with it, it's okay. Notice I make a mistake, I say, that's okay. Um, <laughs> it's kind of how I paint, make a mistake, go, that's okay, I'll fix it. Uh, some of that is confidence is having painted enough to know that you have the always have the ability to go back and make something work better than it uh, it started. So I think that's just the way it goes. So we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, I see some reflections down in here in the water. I'm gonna put those in, but not a little bit later. I see a little bit of earth tone in here. So we'll go back to that uh, raw sienna and add a little blue and white to it. And cause it's not as bright, I'm gonna kind of come in in here. I'm mixing up some dark on the brush here because as it goes under the snow, it gets a little darker. So I'm kind of indicating that now. And we'll leave it. All right, I don't want to go farther. Don't have time. Sometimes by not, and uh, a lot of you have asked this question before, but by not, but how do I loosen up? How do I loosen up? Don't give yourself as much time. Keep moving because the more time you give, the more 
you'll probably want to go and say, well, that's not right, I'll fix that. That's not right, I'll fix that. Well, sometimes an indication or an abbreviation of something is actually better than a full-on rendering. Keep that in mind. So we had a little bit of the light side of that. Let's start to put some light snow in, okay? Had to get a look at my time. So I'm gonna switch down to a smaller brush. Um, probably something like number eight. So a number eight rose, and I'm gonna take the warm white and I'm gonna start popping in. Oh, look at that. Simple warm white, no medium in it. And nothing else mixed in? It's a little dry. It's a little, not right now. It's not just warm white. And I added a little bit of medium. Solvent pre gel. Yeah, just because it wasn't sticky. It was blending too much. And I want it to, I don't want it to blend. I want it to, um, also you get these incredible wet into wet strokes. And I'm just playing with the patterning I'm seeing. Light behind trees. That's why I haven't painted those trees in. Because then I've got to paint around them. Doing a little bit of that now, but. There we go. Had to pick up a little bit more. It was getting a little dirty. Didn't mind it to a degree, but it started to bother me, so. A little tiny brush and I can add some really nice little patterning back in there. A little bit of white here and there. I just kind of, I'm not even, and I looked and then I just turned away and just started painting it in. Kind of in right in here. I see a look go right in there. Back in here. This is way in the background. I'm just I'm worried about all this background. It comes over right behind this tree. I painted around a tree, say so I shouldn't have. I don't want it. Just the more you paint around things, sometimes the more um, your piece can begin to look like you fussed on it too much. So I like to paint through things more than I do like to paint around or up to. Uh, good friend of mine, uh, wonderful painter Kathleen Dunty, reminded me something that I said. Uh, which I kind of like. I thought, wow, I really said that. Uh, and that is, you got to paint through, not to. So if I did say that, <laughs> and I'm told I did, um, I like that. So I painted a little bit too in here. But we're starting to get the feeling of that dappled light on the snow. Now, while I've got that, I'm gonna take that warm white, clean it up. I'm gonna add a little white to it this time because I had a lot of crud in my brush and I'm adding enough medium, both uh, solvent-free gel and a um, little bit of the safflower so that I can be a little more accurate. So we're gonna kind of come in right there. We'll put that in right there. And a little pull off the tree. Just these little, you can do this with a big brush, you guys do it. You can fuss with your little brush later if you need to clean things up. Trust yourself a little bit. Learn how to use that tip. The tip of the brush can do wonders. And if I, if I mess it up too much, I will go back and fix it. But if you can trust yourself a little bit, you, you guys will be surprised how well you will all do. I'm not just saying that, I really mean that. I mean, most artists, if they let themselves go and they don't worry as much, can be better painters than they think they might be. 
just because you don't over fuss. And I'm fussing now, but I'm fussing with a brush that's way too large. In other words, I'm trying for accuracy, but I'm trying to get the feeling correct. And it, by using a larger brush, I'm, I'm keeping a feeling to it and not a just picking the whole thing apart. I like that edge, one of my favorite edges so far. You live for those strokes every now and then. You get them and you go, oh, you know, it's like, oh my God, I did it. Something worked. Most of the other ones are okay. But every now and then you get one of those that just, you've just been trying for and it just, it works. So I'm letting the colors mix in because not all these dappled lights are as bright. I didn't get anything there. It's a little tree in there, so I don't want to get that. Now we're going to take a white and then and I'm going to take that white and the warm white together with solvent-free gel and a little bit of because I'm going to be painting over this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come in like this and paint. And you see me when you see me lift up, it's that I'm trying to get either a tapered, a very narrow edge or a soft edge. Got a mound right there. So if I want to get more undulation in this, I'll tell you what, all I need to do is brush this out a little bit more. The more I brush it, the more I push it back into the paint that's already there. So if I want bright snow, I want it to sit on top. If I want snow that has a little bit more of an undulation, then what I want to do is I want to blend it a little bit as I paint. That's big hill. It's got this nice right there. See, I'm getting, look at that dirty paint right there. So I just put clean paint over it, clean paint over it. Another hill, another hill here. But these, see, I'm mixing the paint into the paint right now. So it's not as white. The paint from underneath. Yep. So if I want it to go whiter, I'll take some of that paint off the brush, take my, the brighter color with the medium and add the light in it that it needs, whoops, the light that it needs. And in doing so, you can get it where it's feeling a little bit more like it's, it's undulating the way that you want it. Um, let's go down here. Get a little bit more, not as bright. I'm gonna mix this into my other colors and I wanna pull some of these down, down the slope uh, lights that are kind of sneaking through. And I go back to my lighter colors. A little bit lighter. I'm gonna have a little stronger right here. And a little bit more up in here. I don't want to get that. A little brighter there, a little brighter there. Let's take the white, the warm white again. Loosen it up with medium because I'm going to come in on this foreground right here, there. As I push the brush down harder, I put apply more paint. If I just lightly touch it, I don't apply as much. So it's brighter right here, it goes up and it fades and then it gets brighter up here. These footprints, if I had time, I'd put footprints in, but I don't have time, I know. 
Okay, so we're gonna leave that alone right now. We're gonna come up with a four, very foreground. Same two colors, clean, white, and we're gonna hit that edge. And we're gonna hit that. It fades away, so I wanna fade it. I don't want this to be as bright. I want it to be bright at this point, but not as it goes back. And then we got some real faint dap of light that comes through, just kind of in there. And then it almost has a little bit of an orange. So I threw a little orange into that color. I just started to catch it. Threw a little bit of a cat orange, too much. But let's try it anyway. What do you say? I think it's cut off here. So I gotta pull it back a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry for the shaking. Moving the camera a little bit so you guys can see what's going on down, down below. Back to, my, back to my bright colors. Put a little light right there on this and right there. And then we'll let it fade a little bit. It fades back up. Faded it too much. Again, I'm painting it into wet paint. So as I paint into wet paint, I'm always gonna have that problem of it picking up the paint. Sometimes that's gonna work for you. Other times you're gonna to wanna to kind of go back and fix it. Tom makes a really good point. So he said, I, I love how strokes can show the artist confidence. Yeah, you're right. That it's, uh, I'm gonna give you a quote that uh, probably the most influential teacher I had, which was Don Putman uh, said to our class one time, he says, some of you in here may be able to paint better than me, but no one will put their strokes down with more confidence. Oh. I like, I remember, I swear, I'm, we're, when I'm talking about something from class and I graduated from school in 1970. So we're talking a long time ago before a hell of a lot of you guys were born. And I still remember it. That was because of his years of experience. That was because of his years of experience. No, it's your years of experience. And that's what happens with everybody. Experience gives you confidence. So the comment that you made is really well um, articulated in terms of what happens in anyone's career. You will gain confidence. It will just happen because you've done it so many. It's it's like writing your name. First time you ever started writing your name, you wrote, I mean, I wrote so careful. It's just now my signature, you can hardly tell it, but it's got, I put it down with confidence. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I just want to get enough of this in because we got to get back into the trees. I got to get into the water. So we got those three areas that we're dealing with. Remember, and I'm constantly picking up. I'm going to need some more. My warm white. In a second, I can feel it. Is it out there? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Um, now, it's lighter here, behind, and then this. I'm gonna just brush it in, just keep brushing it in. And that will add, uh, give me that undulation. And that goes lighter right in here. Can get by that. And then we just, all you, you're just brushing it back in to creating the movement of the snow. The more time you have, the more careful you can be with that. The less time you have, the more you just indicate it and leave it. Someone's asking, uh, is asking about the whites that you're using. The whites, I'm using two whites. I'm using warm white and I'm using radiant white. And the warm white, I'm using them together. I have not used just radiant white all by itself. I've, I've used them together because I want um, a warmer color. And the warm white has a little bit of almost a yellow kind of a color to it. They're both uh, gambling. They're both gambling products, yeah. So I'm starting to get a little undulation there, which I, I kind of like. 
what I was striving for. A lot of it is just going back and brushing it out a little bit. You don't really have to add a lot of color. Leave that alone. It's, it starts to have the right kind of look. And if it starts to, now like I could easily find myself going back into that and spending another 40 minutes on just this area. But I would do it at another time. I don't want to do it at this particular time, mainly because actually two reasons. One, I'll probably overwork it. And two, I know I don't have that time. So the luxury of time. And to answer your question again, this is how you get loose. You give yourself less time. You have to make more of your, you got to make your strokes count more. And that's that course that I uh, developed many, many years ago when I was teaching down south. And I, 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 it was part of a course and I turned it into a total course when I started teaching at the academy. And a book. And a book. And it's the quick studies. It's the concept of giving yourself a very short amount of time and not to try and do a, uh, a developed, finished painting that you might do. If I just said, do a wonderful painting, you have as long as you want. And so next year you can turn it in. All right. Um, you'll learn something, but you'll learn faster if you literally go through and make an attempt to get your paintings done quickly, then you can go back once you start, and that'll begin to build that confidence and the uh, understanding of editing a little bit more, the brush control that you want, because you've been forced to use an economy of, of um, brush strokes, an economy of everything. And so because of that, it gives you a different kind of opportunity and you learn, I believe, faster. I, and it's the mistake is I'm trying, a lot of people when they take courses like this, they think I'm trying to teach them how to paint faster and I'm not, I, I don't. I know you guys see this, you think, oh, you paint really fast, I hear it all the time. I don't, I really don't. Um, I do when I'm doing things like this, demonstrations, studies, yeah, then I paint quickly, partly because that's what it's all about. You don't, I mean, I don't have time to sit here and spend, uh, and I'd lose all of you. You guys would be walking away if I was, if I sat here and spent uh, 15, 20 hours on a painting. I mean, it really does get boring to watch, you know? Um, it's, it's not boring for the artist, the guy doing it, but boy, for an observer, it, uh, anybody see the, the, wonderful movie, uh, Tim's Vermeer. Um, it's a great movie. And when you look at the number of hours, that guy, that guy broke down and cried. He was working so hard for so long. Okay. I, I, the undulation starting to work. So I kind of want to lay off that. Now, I don't want to, what's all that stuff? Um, it's more dirt. Uh, I just put too much dirt in there, but that's okay. Let's get it, let's fill it in. So it's a bigger bank. It doesn't bother me. I think I'll bring the snow down further is what it means. That's what that means. I knew it meant something. Uh, so that yellow, let's. Get a little bit of, it looks like there's a little reflection of water in that too. I mean, What's uh, Linda and Monahan wants to know the name of the movie? Tim's Vermeer. I'll write it. It's impressive. <laughs> uh, it's a fair guy, is not a painter. He read, he's, he's uh, studied Vermeer and he used every trick that Vermeer has said to have used. Camera Lucia, everything and spent a little over a year reproducing a Vermeer. And um, 
you see what he did over the course of the year. It's really, I mean, dedication, everything. So I'm gonna put a few of these rocks in, by the way, you guys. Uh, see the time? Okay. Careful with your foot by the tripod. Careful of my foot. Well, it's hitting. Put that tripod. rock in right there. Hitting the tripod. Rock. <clears throat> Was behind the snow, so I probably need to. I'm going to need to paint that snow back on top because I'm painting behind. There's another little rock right in here. Goes behind this bank. Oh, I, I like the way the, the um, paint is kind of mushing together. Technical term. Yeah, mush. Another rock. Put a rock here. I like that. There's a beautiful reflection of the snowbank in there that I hope hope I can get in there. Um, let me throw a little bit of cool into that color and darken it just a little bit. We're going to put a little bit of a bank right here, there, and the way it peeks out there. And then there's a little bit of a rock down in here. There's some brush. Couple little rocks here. I'm I'm putting in the ones I want. One and two. I don't want to put that hole in the snow. Um, I do want to get a little bit of the end. And I'm using a little raw sienna, a couple other colors in here. Um, a lot of the brown. Okay, let me see if there's anything else. Right down here, there's a little bank. Oh, got it too dark. It's pretty light. Uh, oh, there it is. The dirt of the earth, and it looks like there's a rock on it, a cooler rock, so I can actually go back to some of these blues that I mixed. It's gotta be darker than the snow. It's good. There's a good amount of color mixtures that are starting to feel okay. Um, I put this in a, I put it probably where, where I thought this was going to be, and it's in the wrong spot now. Um, there is a rock over there. And the rock sits right there and there, and then it has some light on it, but we'll put that light on a little bit. So another little rock about down in here, and another one over here. And then we're starting to see through the water as you get up close. So I'm going to add a little bit of that in right now. It's warmer. It has a lot more. It actually has a little green in it now that I look at it too. So I, I took some raw sea on it. Let's see what happens when I just kind of push some paint around in here. A little bit more green. A little bit more green. Let's try this. I've seen some rocks through here. A little bit, not quite as, as uh, strong, but I'm getting a little bit of warmth back in here. And here. So we're seeing through, a little bit through the water. Okay, we get a little reflection of the snowbank there. And then the, this reflection that I have here actually occurs I don't know why I left that so blue. Boy, that was a mistake. Um, probably more like in here. I'm going to fix that. I don't know why I left that so blue. It's pretty light. Whoa, look at that. I got a piece of paint there. Uh, and then it goes behind. Oh, it's a little cast shadow. Look at this. A little cast shadow from this rock on that on that little bank of snow right there. Little touches, little things like that. Boy, if you can find them, use them. They're there for you. They're there for you. They're not there for anyone else. So don't be afraid to use them. So a few darks. Picking up light paint, so I'm not getting, there we go, that's dark. 
nice dark on the edge of that rock back behind. There's a, some rocks back behind. It probably won't get them all in, but a little cooler. And sits back behind and it makes a bank, comes up there. There's another one back here. I like what's happening there. Even though it's kind of abstracted, it feels pretty good to me. It isn't 100% accurate. Um, I'm gonna bring the snow down a little bit so we get a little bit more there. And then there's that wonderful dark, not dark enough, blue, brown. It's because I'm painting into white paint is why. There we go. There, there. I like that's working okay. Let's start to get some of those trees in now, okay? Um, take a little bit of a smaller brush. So oh, let's take the, uh, let's talk, that looks good right there. Mm, I don't like the feel of it. Grab, here, let's grab one of these rosemary filberts. Um, okay. Let's start to put some of the tree trunks in. Let's put one in here. See, overlapped. Every time I do that, I've got to pick up more paint. I cannot keep using because I'm picking up the paint that's there. There's another tree trunk right there. There's another one back in here. See, I'm picking up the background. I want to get the tree trunks in front of the snow. And then there's going to be, there's going to be a tree coming from right here. And it's going to cast a shadow on the snow. So we're going to go back kind of to my shadow concept color and just right about in there. Yeah, you're kind of blocking, but not much you can do. <laughs> I don't want to go this fast. There's another tree right in here. Got way too red, way too much red. More green into it. There we go. That's right. It goes, kind of comes up here, and there's some brush. Oh, look at that! Great, best strokes I've made right there. Every now and then it happens. You gotta love it when it does, because you don't when it doesn't. Those are as good. This is where you get areas that overlap. Let's see, there's more little tree trunks. Right. Pull one out here. And then we get more of the lights. Carol wants to know where you're looking on the reference. I'm looking at, well, if I'm painting this, I'm looking at that. No, but where can you point to the reference area? Every time, if I do it every time, I'll never get done. <laughs> no, I'm painting just... right here, right now. Oh, right there. Okay. Okay. But <laughs> I move so my, my eyes move so fast from one area to another. It's really hard for me to tell you every time I do that because I'm going from one area to another constantly. I'm going right over here now. See that those two tree trunks, right? So we're going to take that and bring it down about there. Ah. Okay. It could be a fatter tree. Yeah. Trees come in all shapes. Don't be afraid. You don't have to be a hundred percent accurate to that exact tree that you're copying. It's not like painting architecture. Yeah, painting architecture is much more uh, is less forgiving. Let's put it that way. And there's a lot of overlapping back in here. So I literally, you could, I mean, I could be going quick, just making stuff up. I don't have to be, I'm gonna grab one of my little liners because I see some small stuff, make the paint very thin. And I see some, a lot of little tree trunks right in here. So I'm just gonna go, Whoa. all right. And we just make it feel like there's a lot of trees there. Now just take the green, this kind of area that's but I went that's a little too dark. So I mixed a little oh, there we go, that's better. Just bring some of that 
down to overlapping. And then we get some more, keep moving. We get another one right in here, I can see, right there. But there's some little tree trunks back there, right there. You, there's no way a lot of you can even see this. It's so small. And then there's two trees. Let's get rid of that. Uh, that come up right about here. Okay, so we're gonna bring one of them up there and we'll take the other one. I like the two. So we'll bring the other one there. It's gonna get a little heavier in there. Now, I'm gonna keep moving across because I see more tree trunks. One there and one there. And it's really important that we get this overlapping of these trees because this is what gives it depth. Even if you're making them up, even if you're just adding a few in there, if you add a few in there and they don't work, um, doesn't matter. You can take them out if you have to. But if it bugs you, take it out. Okay, so let's take, let's make some foliage. And well, first one, we'll hit this tree just a little bit. Well, pieces. Really wet paint I'm painting over, very wet. It's like two or three layers of paint. So you have to be really delicate with that when you put that paint brush down there. That's why I'm using this filbert because it's got such long bristles. It does not push heavily into the paint. It's easier to lay paint on top. Probably be better use a small brush here, but I don't want to switch right now. It's the, I've got the right thing happening. It isn't the finesse that I'm after, but it's got the right look. Um, let's see, right here I can go. And then there's a couple stumps. I'm not going to treat them like stumps, but I do like them. They're coming out right about here. So that all this is, is a form of overlapping. Now I got to add some light to the trees in a little bit right, before I do, because I want to get that in. If I can get the lights in the trees, then I've got everything kind of covered. Um, so I want to take this tree, I want to hit some darks like I did with all those other trees. I'll take some up. Uh, I'm going to take my little liner with the colors I was just using, and we're going to put a little few of these branches in. <coughs> Bless you. starts to give it a little bit more life. I still got this hollow back in here, but I see some things I'm going to do with that. So I do have plans. Um, I just want to get enough of this stuff in here. I think I do. Uh, I'm going to take an add. I mentioned I was going to go a little darker. And that's why I didn't start. So I've got the blue and the uh, asphalt together with a lot of medium in it. And I'm going to start pushing some darks. And then we'll push those lights at the last minute too. We'll get those the lights on the tree trunks. Now I really noticed uh, earlier that it got real dark right on the right side, right here. Oh, I look, I got a, the right medium in the brush because it's making the good marks. Marks, meaningful marks without having to lay, over labor it. And I'm getting that rich overlapping that I was after. 
and it's skipping. It's not, which is good. If, in other words, it's not real heavily dense. Maybe this tree can put a little bit of dark. I'm mixing it back into that color so it's not quite as dark. Even though I'm using the same brush and the same color, because I'm mixing into a color that's already down there, it's not going as dark. And here I can do the same thing. You see in here. So we're just we're enhancing some of the shadows, making them a little bit darker. Up in here, we get a little bit because the lights always sit on top. However, you might mess up when you do your light, so you might need to come over with some darks. So even though lights sit on top, it doesn't mean that that means you're done when you put your lights in. It means that hopefully you don't have as much work to do. Now we got slush that around and put a little green, make it a little bit lighter. And just, I need some, some more stuff in here. Growth. I had it way too under, which is pretty normal. So let's take a look. Let's start to do some lights in the trees. So I'm gonna take ochre to that same color I was just using. A lot of ochre to it. Maybe a little bit of a green up with the ochre, but let's give it a shot and see where we're at. Not, not light enough. More ochre, more medium now. Because I'm, I'm piling paint on. I mean, I don't know how many layers of paint I have down there right now. So that feels a little better. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. And I'm going to add more ochre. Still not getting it where I want it. That's better. A little bit up in here, a little sneaking back in here. I would love to mix a whole bunch more greens and variations, and I don't know how to have the time. Hopefully. No, I won't. <laughs> I just looked at my watch. I've got about maybe 15 to 20 minutes. I gotta get back for a second. That's it's the right color. It's just not light enough, which is okay because that what it's gonna allow me to do is to do layers. It's just that I don't know if I have time to do all the layers I want. Let's put some light on these trees. It's still not light enough. Gonna add a little. When it doesn't go light enough, I'm adding a little Naples yellow light to it. There, back behind. So we're painting back. We're painting in front. I'm adding, I'm going to try a little bit of the, um, that might do it, son of a gun. I threw a little of the, uh, oh, I kind of like that. Let's, I actually mixed with the yellow, I mixed a little bit of the radiant white. See, I'm getting, get that much lighter. And if I want a little green, I just lean it, it's gradient white, radiant blue, I'm sorry. And I mix the green almost the same, same value, but it, Almost all of that, truthfully, is really warm. No, I think I do better, truthfully, with my little gesso brush at this point, because I'm trying to cover a lot of territory, and that's the brush that I need when I want to cover a lot of territory. So it's yeah, that works a little better. This way I can. Every now and then I see it get a little warm, which is like I mixed a little orange in there. Push it back a little green. A little bit more green. A little more, a little more ochre. Some darks. OK, 
can see right now is a couple of tree trunks need to be worked on. I haven't hit any light on the tree trunks yet. I see some things down here I want to do too. So let's see what I can get done. I know I can't get everything. This is where you edit. You make your choices. You say, okay, then I'll do this because I can't do that, but I'll. Really, it gets really light back in the distance right there. So I painted behind that tree and back in here too. Same kind of lightness. We want those layers. Up in here a little bit, a little bit of light, not as much. Interesting. A little bit more green. So this foliage is something you can work on forever. I think you can see that. And it's pretty, it's not difficult. It's just a matter of going through the layers, putting one layer on, another layer on, another layer until you get it to the, if you go too far, put some darks back. Because lights usually sit on top. So, but you're, you're working it to that point. So if you wanted to at this point, I might want to take and make, throw some more darks back into these areas where I've overpainted them a little more than I wanted because I was using the wrong type of brush at that particular time. But this, this little brush will allow me to get the character without the pickiness. Okay, I mentioned I was going to try and do a couple of things. Number one was, I'm going to put this, but I don't want to put it right here. I want to put it more like here. So well, let's try it right about there. Now I'm picking up white. So watch what happens when I take that same color. I just pull the white up and it, it becomes the other color that I need. It's a little too light. I didn't want it quite that white. And if it goes a little too dark, I mean, a little too clumsy, a little too thick, you just basically take one of your clean brushes with the background color and clean it out, make it neater. Maybe this gets a little heavy, so I want that a little thinner. So it's pretty easy. It's, it's not it's tremendously- easy for you to say. Huh? Is it easy for you to say? It is easy. It's easy for anybody. So I'm going to put a couple little twigs off of it. Okay. And it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow. It doesn't show it there very much, uh, but it's going to cast a little shadow kind of like there. And then let's diffuse it so it doesn't, oh, I don't know what that, okay. Uh, little thing, I don't want the bent one. I may, might want to show some of these. I hate to do this with a little brush like this, but I just don't want to spend the time to switch brushes right now. Um, okay, a lot of little things that I see I could bust on. I'm gonna, let's put some uh, light on the tree trunks. I can find a good, we find a good brush to do that with. Um, here, let's do a small filter. Some nice warm, so I'm gonna take canned orange, I'm gonna take can, I'm gonna take maple yellow light and a little bit of a uh, ochre. Mix them together. So I think I can, I think I don't, I don't, excuse me, I don't think I'm light enough. So, Egbert. Huh? Is that the Egbert? Yeah, yeah. I keep long bristle filter. There's a one tree trunk that comes up here. Color is just a little off. 
There should be a shadow on it, a little bit of light. On it. And I, you can just hit because they don't have to be the exact trees. I threw a little bit more alizarin into it. Let's see if I probably threw too much. There's a little bit. I like it at the base there where it hits. And let's pull one back in here. I'm going to add a little bit more light to that. And we'll hit like. There. Another one here. Light can hit almost anywhere in this. It's that of light. So light is coming through in kind of uh, a way that will hit. And I can see little spots. Sometimes you can get little pulls up in here, little pieces of light that sneak through. Here. Let's go over all the way to the right now. A little, I lightened it up too. And we're going to hit oh, nice golden. So I'm going to bring some more ochre into that color that I was just using. Maybe some, maybe some cat yellow even. Let's try this. Up here, we get a little light. Fades away. It's a little lighter, maybe still. Fades the shadow, and you pick up more light at the bottom. Okay. And another one, a little darker, but back behind here. So we're going to put a little light there. Darlene wants to know, what do you mix for the medium? For the what? Medium. Uh, the medium. The medium is basically I'm using solvent-free gel by Gamblin, and I'm mixing a little bit of a, when I really want it to get wet, I throw some safflower oil in along with it. And I just mix that into the paint. Gotta add a few little spots up in here that aren't quite there. Tree trunk will make a little bit more sense. I lost that color. Here it is somewhere. I have to. I had to get back just for a second, just to see where things are in this. I, I see some spots in here that I think need a few more darks. So I still have that color on the brush with a lot of medium in it so I can and I'll just work back and forth with it until I get it where I want it. And if I want to particularize, meaning I really want to go in and that's what uh, one of these Carolyn was asking is, where are you looking? Well, towards the end, if I really want to clarify some of the areas, I call it particularizing, but you want to clarify um, you can you can go in with a smaller brush and just really work those areas. So it just depends upon how free you want your painting to be. Now, if you want it really kind of um, strong and and forceful in terms of the character of the paint that you put down, then you probably don't want to do that. But I generally do it. I, I truthfully I like enough refinement in my work for it to feel completed. Um, and it's probably my biggest objection right now. And it doesn't have anything, by the way, just the fact that it's, it just, it has to do with the development of textures. And in this case, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that it's a big painting. It's really more that because of what's going on, you need a lot of layering back in here. And I can see there's even some light tree trunks. So I can actually now, go with a lighter color. And I can see I'm writing there's one right in there. Oh. And a little bit up in here. Like 
there. I can see a little light coming in right there. Um, so these are all these little touches that you can play with. Um, and it just, it's very individualistic at this point, how far you could, you could call this a complete painting. If you, you know, depending on literally what your goal was or how you feel about it. Uh, or you could take this and develop it and turn it into a, a more, I don't want to say more finished, but maybe a little more refined. Maybe there's more refinement in it. Um, it's just, you have to give yourself time to notice things. I just noticed a tree trunk right here. And I noticed more foliage kind of pushing over this. And then I noticed foliage coming down here. So little things like I'm doing right now are the things that you, I mean, you can spend hours on these little things that I'm doing. I'm just trying to give you the feeling of what, what is possible. So right now, I want to put a shadow. I want to put a shadow. And I, this is where I paint. Now I'm painting. I kind of indicated some of them, but now I want to clarify and make them a little bit more um, meaningful, for lack of a better word. Even back in here, I can see lights going further back. The little lights right in there, right there, and then this could be brighter. I, I like, I, I really do like it when I don't go too bright too quickly because I know I, then I can build up more layers um, and get the thing to feel a lot better. I'm going to go back to the water and the rocks in just a second because I know we're almost done. Um, just I notice a little dirt back there because I've got dirt over in the other areas. I want to kind of keep a little bit of a consistency. I don't like this heavy. Uh, I think I'd just go back with the shadow color and break that up a little bit. It just felt it felt a little too heavy handed. That feels a little better, even though it's it's not very refined. Um, we'll go, I'm gonna go down with some darks and we're gonna kind of clarify that and that. And the way that goes behind the edge. Okay, um, let's go into the rocks just a little bit. I'm gonna take the eight again, bigger brush, gonna give the rocks a little bit of light. Just a lighter version of the color that I mixed. Well, we know the light's coming from there. That's okay. It's a little redder than I wanted, but I'd rather have, it. I'd rather have a little bit more of the orange side than I would the red side. Um, once I hit it, then I should be able to go into most of the rocks and get them where I want them. There, a little bit there. It's mean, beginning to see through the water right in here. Oh, I know what I didn't put in um, that I really I was going to. Or I think I'll do it with the with this egg bird. A uh, couple things. Number one. Where we at here? Just, just about time. I'm going to go about probably five minutes over. I'm going to put a little bit of texture up. Just using more CAD, uh, excuse me, not CAD, more Naples Yellow Light to add a little bit of light to it and keep it in the same kind of color scheme. Also give it a little texture. Um, what I was getting at is there is a reflection from that snow, which I didn't put in. Probably some of you are sitting back there, but like I usually do when I watch people demonstrate, is he ever gonna put that in? Is he ever gonna put that in? Um, so get a little bit of, and it gives some movement of the water. It's not anywhere near as bright as the snow. It goes around the rock, <clears throat> down around the, uh, let's just paint through them. And then, A little bit lighter. I just throw a little bit more of the warm white into the color. A little bit more warmth to it too. Let's just try this. 
trying all kinds of things. Go with my small, whoops, it still had warm color in it. Didn't want that. Let's see if this works. I gotta step back just just a little bit. I don't want to put on little foam pieces that um, that's distracting. So I don't want to really get get that in there. Those little kind of pieces of foam. Although I can lighten up a couple of these rocks a little bit more, like right there. Doesn't hurt. A little bit more here before it goes underwater. The top of this rock. A couple of these rocks actually have snow. If I wanted to, I could actually put snow on the rock themselves. Oh, starting to give a little bit of form to those guys. I see a little snow. Remember, I see a dark. This one, I didn't want to go too dark, too fast, right there. And there. Here. Let's uh, put the feeling of that snow bank there. And then the white of the snow as it comes down there. It feels better. Take that white of the snow if I want and add a little bit of, I see a little snow on this one. It's kind of nice. And I can add snow if I want. Uh, I'm going to add snow back here because I see it. And it actually adds a little nice touch to it. Um, there is some really nice, beautiful, you got to use your liner for this. Uh, okay, I think I got, got the color right about here, off this bank. It comes from here probably. Can have more than one. I love adding little touches like that at the end. Anything you can do to just give it a little bit of life. Like there's some, I don't like it there. Uh, I do like it here. I see another little twig if I wanted to. I can add a back in the shadows. Ah, heavy handed, clumsy. Okay. Almost at the point where I, I could see a lot more hours being spent, but, and I haven't stepped back. I may step back one time and do a touch up. I see a little bank of snow right there, which I think is kind of nice. Um, I can probably put a little bit stronger. I'm gonna step back just for a second. See, I have it came together. You know, it came together. I love that. Crap, that worked. <laughs> um, it's the best part of the painting. It just, it jumps, it works, but I do see some light twigs. I just noticed that when I step back and again, it just adds that much more um, dimension to the piece. So it's not just one layer. I tell you, it's fun. Uh, you just gotta keep moving everybody. You, you can't, and I, I've, I mentioned that, you can't stay in one spot on your painting 
and hope to pull it off. You've got to go from one area to another to another, and then go back and revisit those areas. If they if they bother you at that point, do something about it. But don't dwell on it. Don't just sit there and go, oh, I got to fix. And I've mentioned it many times. Otherwise, the whole day's gone. You know, you've you've lost the whole time painting one area, and you probably didn't improve it a lot. You probably just overworked it. So what I find is to get away from it. Um, now this is just like 90 minutes worth of lay-in, and that's kind of what I'm calling it, because it's more of a lay-in than it is a finish. But sometimes, um, I've known this in other works that I've found, sometimes lay-ins can be really nice and you say, geez, I don't want it going further because I kind of like there's certain qualities here, or maybe I just want to do a little touch up here and there. Um, that's fine. That's usually what I do when I, before I post these, I go back and look at them. And if something really bothers me terribly, I touch it up. But generally, if I don't, I don't go back and spin. I just spotted this little tree here. It's really nice. Oh, too wet. Um, I'll go back and touch it up. <laughs> I won't go back and really try and over refine it because I want to keep the same character of the type of painting that I did when I laid it in. And that's, to me, the difference between a studio painting and for me, a plein air. Different artists may have different uh, characters that they try and capture when they do a plein air. For me, it's, it's capturing the essence with a lot of spontaneity. Um, and that's kind of how I approach these that I do with these kind of demo paintings that I do, is I approach them to try and get the accuracy down, keep the spontaneity there and learn something. The whole thing, you know, you guys, uh, people thank, thank us all the time. I, I need to thank you because what you, what you allow me to do is this forces me into doing these kind of paintings, which I, they're not my studio stuff. Uh, and right now I've been doing more of that than I have been going out and doing plain air. So, um, and I miss it. Why haven't I done it? Well, I have classes that I have to teach and I have other obligations, um, but that I truly miss. Um, being able to, to go outside all the time um, and paint, you know, it's like, and I don't have a model. So I'm basically, you know, working from, from uh, my references. Any questions? Because I'm going to call it quits only because right now it's more of what I call the particularizing of, of elements that I really need to do. It's not um, the basic lay in is there, and the basic look is pretty much what I wanted. Um, the other elements are just a matter of how much refinement I want to do. And I don't want these to be overly refined. I want these to be nice, spontaneous, um, large studies. And I, I refer to them as that, they're large studies. That's, and that doesn't mean a large study, by the way, cannot be a finished painting. I, mean, I don't mean that at all, because it can. They've got their own, studies may have their own beauty, but I'm an artist. And most artists love studies because, um, they see, they don't see the, the completion. They see kind of uh, the artist's thought pattern and the artist's hand, you know? It's like, how cool is it whenever you get a chance to go back and view a great master's work that's not complete? I, I remember seeing some hands at the Tuileries Gallery of Degas, just hands, just study of hands. And there was just something gorgeous about him, um, as opposed to seeing all of his beautiful finished paintings it was really nice to see something of that nature. So uh, that's that's my line. <laughs> okay. Um, let me thank everybody at the Academy. I'm going to do one next week, but I'm going to take the Friday after Thanksgiving off, as I hope all of you do, and uh, and then we'll be back the following Friday. So. Pretty much that's my, uh, 
that's my snow scene. Um, and as you see, I can sit and do this kind of crud all day and I'd make mistakes and I'll go back and fix them. And don't, if I, I'll tell you something, uh, and I, I think I've mentioned it before, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Uh, you can go, when sometimes the mistakes that you make add something to your painting because you're forcing yourself to go back and clarify or refine a little bit. And um, it's just, it's, it's something you all can do. Um, have fun. If I were to work on this more, which I probably will I'd do a little, have a little lunch and then go work on it a little bit. But I don't, I don't spend much more than 20 minutes if I even spend that. Uh, but I can see a little bit more up in here. This is okay. I mean, I know it could be refined more. I could create more undulation, but for a, for a, a quickie, it does what I want it to do. Okay. So look. Thank you all very much. Somebody asked about the reference earlier. So I'm just gonna zoom in on that and then come back. Kind of didn't get the whole thing in there, I think, because it's large painting, but. Yeah, I didn't get back from it as much as I would have liked to, but um, at the same time, okay. that's where trust comes in. When you can't get back all the time, you kind of have to trust trust yourself a little bit. Um, and what's, as someone once said in one of these sessions, that's experience. You want, you want me to get in the picture? <laughs> My hair's a mess. You have so much so pain growing. on your face. I need a haircut. I got pain on my hands. Pain on your face. Pain on my face. And that's how I paint. Anyway. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tim, for helping us out. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. All right.